at all times. Any unattended baggage will be removed and may be destroyed by security services. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome viewers from the British Aces channel. Thank you very much, Jay, for sending everybody over. We're going to be doing the Brighton main line tonight, starting in eight minutes' time. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap.
Good evening ladies and gentlemen, please have your drinks and light refreshments ready. This Dead Row stream will be departing in five minutes time. Five minutes time for the Dead Row stream, London to Brighton. Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. This is your final call, ladies and gentlemen. This Dad Rouse stream will be departing in two minutes. Two minutes for the Dad Rouse stream. This is a safety announcement. 
It is not committed to cycle, skateboard, or rollerblade within the station building. Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Great to have you here. Richard here, from Dad Rad, of course. We've got the official merch going on today and absolutely everything. Fantastic. I do apologise for the slight delay. I was uh, making a cup of tea. Oh, lovely. Okay, right. I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen, but for some reason... I'm listening back to my own stream somewhere, and it's very off-putting. I'm just trying to find out where it is. There it is. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm talking, and all I can hear is myself coming back through the headphones about 10 seconds later, so it's a, it's a little bit weird. But never mind, never mind. How are we all doing today? Who have we got in? We've got Super Tram, Adrian, Train Geek, JLS Plays, DT, Pig, and Bob. Uh, Moses B, new member. Hello and welcome. MCD Studios, fantastic. Hannah Scott, great to have so many of you in tonight. And if you have just joined us from uh, the British Aces channel, then you are very welcome here. So we are going to be jumping onto the Brighton uh, London commuter line today. We're going to do, be doing Brighton to London, Victoria, which is a route that I do sign in real life, driving a train that I sign in real life. Um, however, I have never driven this route as a passenger driver, only as a freight driver. So that's my excuse if anything goes wrong always need to have one before we jump in guys and as always got to tell you all the views and opinions expressive in this video are solely my own unless otherwise stated and they may not reflect those of any companies that might be employed by or associated with and all of that good stuff we are of course going to be having all of our usual features we are going to be jumping in and out of the discord server live stream pictures page in the discord server if you want to post anything and you'll find a link in the description below and we're going to be playing our very popular game let's play locomotive livery location Today's picture provided by Raygun. We'll play our first round of that once we get started. So without further ado, let's press the button. Vine boom, and we are into Train Sim World 3. We're playing Train Sim World 3, but obviously this is a Train Sim World 2 route. Um, and it's quite noticeable because some of the lighting is pretty poor compared to what we're used to in the Train Sim World 3 routes. But never mind. We are doing 1 Alpha 5 1 Brighton to London Victoria. This is an 8 car class 377 service. Press get started. There we are. Okie dokie. London Victoria on the board there. Where are we stopping? Uh, let's get the right controls. Hassocks, Burgess Hill, Haywood Teeth, Gatwick Airport, East Croydon, Clapham Junction, and London Victoria. Let's get this train set up. So we jump over, we're going to turn our safety systems on. AWS, DSD, Vigilance, all on, fantastic. Back in the lovely comfy driver's chair. Key on, into neutral. Cancelling our AWS there, 387 arriving on the other platform. And we get some lights on. Uh, we're going to night running. we got a green and an MM for main. And we'll get some doors open right there. Uh, I, I, itch, I, H, good evening, how are we doing? 156 Andrew. How are we doing? Valentino Collins, hello. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Adam, tea and biscuits are at the ready. Tea and biscuits at the ready in the Dadra mug, available on the merch store. Always plug. <laughs> DET, I will be here in a few weeks for the 313 Farewell Tour. Uh, we're going to have to do something special on the on the channel for the 313 Farewell Tour. It will be it will be a sad day when the 313s go. It certainly will. Uh, right, what are we doing? We are waiting for time, 1803. We're going to try and do this hubless. <laughs> we'll wait until we depart, then I'll turn the HUD off. The only problem I have, disclaimer, uh, running HUDless, is I never know what power brake notch. I mean, I'm playing on the keyboard. Um, so without looking down, I never know exactly where I am. That's my excuse. I, I'm full of excuses. Right, we've got a green. We've got an M4 main. 
the other indication we could get off that signal would be an E if we were going up the east coastway. Okay, let's get that HUD off. Let me know, guys, if you want the game audio up or down, or if you want that adjusting, we can certainly do that for you. If you can't hear it, then uh, we, we can put it up or down, whatever you like. May I have your attention, please? Beautiful. We are an eight-car train. Someone was asking what stations we're stopping at. We are Hassocks, Burgess Hill, Hey, we see Gatwick Airport, East Croydon, Clapham Junction, and London, Victoria. Oh, we've got fly doors are open at the back. Well, that's probably not supposed to happen. Okay, we are speeding. It's 25 coming out of here. Let's get some brakes in. There we go. And then we're up to 40. Just got to wait for the back of our train to pass the 40 board and we can accelerate away. So it's pure and utter guesswork. I'm going to guess somewhere around the signal. We, we can jump out and see. Yeah, we're well clear there. Right, let's get going. I'm just going to check the station stops again. Um, yeah, Hassocks then, Burgess Hill. Eight cars. Uh, what are we saying? Davro, can I have the sound audio up, please, so I can hear it more clearly? Yeah, not a problem. We can do that for you. Let me know if that is any better sound-wise, guys. <laughs> So line speed has now gone up to 75, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> Double check. As we round the corner into Preston Park, the line's from our left uh, is what's known as the Cliftonville Spur, and that comes in from Hove. Coming through Preston Park now. Uh, in space. I've just lost your comment. <laughs> Have you deleted it? I was going to answer your question. I've just lost it. Uh, may I ask, between Hassocks and Burgess Hill, it's reversible line, but where are the points? As I don't see any wrong side signals at Hassocks. So it's not actually fully reversible. It's what's known as um, simbage, which is simplified by directional signalling. So your section would be Kima Junction or Withersfield, um, all the way down to Preston Park. That would be the section. So it's, it's ba basically it's like simplified bi-directional signalling. Hey Nat, thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. Very generous. So what we want to do, and we probably should have done it a little bit sooner, is just put a little bit of brake in. So we're doing a running brake test. I probably should have done this at a slower speed. Um, but we're just checking that the brakes actually work. So we can see we've got a good rate of retardation there. And as we come around the corner into Patcham Tunnel, the lights will go up to 90. TR9, how are we doing, bud? DET, I completely forget each junction name between Brighton and Gatwick Airport. <laughs> Delayed notification there, but uh, yeah, thanks very much, Nat. Really appreciate that. To both you and the British Age, really good streams. Thank you. Yes, you can tell with the Train Sim World 2 route. I, I would love to see this upgraded to Train Sim World 3. That would be awesome. But the, the lighting, just like the, the lighting level in the cab, doesn't correspond to what we're seeing outside. And now I don't have the cab lights on before someone pulls me up on that. So uh, yeah. Okie dokie, guys. Should we play a game? So guys, I want your numbers between 1 and 25 in the chat, please, for locomotive lo locomotive livery location. That's why I have a jingle, because I can never say it right. Uh, Davidoff, hey Richard, my friend, how are you? I thought you was working. Uh, I worked last night, Davidoff. Um, tonight is my night off. Um, and I'm back at work tomorrow night. Okie dokie, guys. We are just approaching Clayton Tunnel, coming up to 90 miles an hour. The third number in my chat, we always pick the third number, is DET Trains with number 10. 
So as soon as we get into the tunnel, we will play. Clayton Tunnel, beautiful. Okay. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. So if you've not seen the game before, guys, I'm going to give you box number 10. You've got 10 seconds to identify the locomotive livery and location. Here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Anyone get it from that? Any ideas? Let me know in the chat if you have any idea what that could be. Joseph Adams, good evening. Hello. In space, Clayton Tunnel, The Haunted. Apparently so, yeah. Um, let's get a bit of breaking because we are only supposed to be doing 90. I was going to try and get a flyby shot leaving the tunnel there, but uh, apparently not. It's a beautiful looking tunnel. Oh, my camera's going really weird. Okay, so the GSMR tower we've just gone past. Good place to start getting the break in for Hassocks. And when we see the buffer stops, we know we're getting quite close. We want a little bit more break there. So yeah, as I said, I, I signed this route as a freight driver. Um, we run seasonal trains, so de-icing trains and railhead treatment trains down this route. So I've never signed this section of the route as a passenger driver. Um, I did sign the section from Redhill to uh, London Bridge as a passenger driver, but not this section. So I, I don't have very good braking points, I'm just kind of... I'm, I'm winging it. <laughs> okay, so we're an 8-car train, we're looking for the 8-car mark, and the doors will be on the left-hand side. Currently in brake step 2. Giving it a little bit of free, that's pretty bad, that's bad driving. I didn't see an 8 car mark. We'll have to go back and see if that was me or see whether that was... Um... Okay, we are 8 past the 8 doors on the left. I know there is a bit of an issue on this route with um, stop car markers. I just want to check it wasn't me. And I've just sailed straight past it. Um, rush hour passengers looking lovely. Yeah, no, definitely wasn't an 8-car mark on the platform, so I think we, with the HUD off, we may just have to guess. And we're running bang on time, which is fantastic. What are we reckoning then, guys? Locomotive location livery. Um, Penguin says a 37. Adrian says a class 101. Civilian Snap says maybe an Indian loco. 15600 doesn't know. Um, Jack HST Production says HNRC class 37 at Derby. Zip YT is also going for a 101. Um, Michael Littlejohns is going for a 66. Hey, Danny Paul Reed. Hello, bud. How are we doing? Great to have you here. Okay, HUD off. We are off to Burgess Hill. Let's rock and roll. All the trains. Hi, Richard. Do you sign the Grain Branch line in North Kent? I absolutely do, and I shall be driving up there tomorrow. Uh, the Southern Rex. This route has a lot of bugs. Merston platform is so wide. Uh, yeah, I would love to see this route updated and ported over to Train Scene World 3 with all the, the TSW3 stuff on there. That would be amazing. Uh, DET, yeah. Rygate. The, the least said about Rygate on this route, the better. Most definitely. It's not good, is it? It's not good. Right, so we're going to get it up to 60 and shut back. Burgess Hill's not too far away. There we go. Uh, Laserjet, Richard, our Class 69 is clear to run in the southwest because they are due down for me later this year in July. Um, as far as I know, Laserjet, anywhere a Class 56 is cleared to run, a Class 69 is cleared. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe they probably are. They probably are. So, green, we're coming up towards Burgess Hill. The signal you can see on your right, the two yellows there, that is for coming off of the Simbids. So that, that is a, what we call a distant signal. So that signal is, is not capable of showing a red aspect. That can only show um, a yellow or green. 
Uh, Gregory Allen did the kittens destroy the plant? Yeah, you can see that gaping gap behind me. Yes, the, the, the plant has been put outside where it will probably end up dying. But yeah, the kittens completely destroyed it. It's got very dark very quick. I'm guessing that's some sort of dynamic weather effect that's just kicked in. Anyway, talking of which, should we stop for Burgess Hill? That would be a good idea. Uh, all the trains. So I'm on a night shift tomorrow night. So it's going to be about, I want to say about 11 o'clock at night. 2300 when I got grain. So I know here at Burgess Hill we are heading for the end of the platform. We are an 8 car train heading for the 8 car mark. I should have turned the dynamic weather off because I think this stream might end up getting quite dark. Which is going to be a bit of a shame. Break step 2 and we're going to come back to 1 for the final stop. And... That is pretty much bang on. We shall take that into neutral. 8 car train, 8 car mark, doors on the left. Uh, Valentino Collins, when will you next do SCR? Uh, no, well, I say no plans as such. I will definitely be doing SCR again. I haven't done it for quite a while, but I, I can't give you a date at the moment, I'm afraid. Rafe, how about a fake plant with a mesh screen? <laughs> if, even if it was a fake plant, Rafe, they would have they would have wrecked it. JLS, please use the signal belt and I will be quiet. There you go, JLS. No simulated conductors on here, which would be a really, really nice feature to have. Some some sort of simulated dispatch would be would be really nice. Okay, into forward. The next signal is green. So yeah, we were talking earlier about the um, simplified bidirectional signalling, the simbids. The red on the right hand side there is your exit signal from the simbids. So if you're carrying on on the wrong road you'll get the main aspect only if you're coming over to the correct road um, on the signal on the right hand side you'll get the junction indicator yeah the light the lights are turned off in the cab aren't they yeah yeah the lighting level in the cab is does not correspond to what we're seeing outside uh, Jack HST Productions do you have the voyage on British Railways yeah I don't yet but I will do soon Okay, we're coming up to Kima Junction, just passing over that now. I'll be honest with you guys, I wasn't expecting this stream to be so dark. I did I did this run earlier, but the weather stayed clear. <laughs> As we pass through Withersfield. Please stand away from the edge of the platform. And we are now approaching the only foot crossing on the Brighton Main Line. Uh, we can turn off the my track as well there, but yeah, the, the interior cab lighting is just... It's a little bit disappointing, actually. Might as well just keep that, keep that on. Um, Matthew, when is the next rules video? Matthew, it will be out... Um, I've So what's delayed me with the rules videos? I've got a couple of voiceovers to record, and it's the school holidays. So... Other than in the evenings, like now, I've had no opportunity to record voiceovers with nobody in the background. So as soon as I get those voiceovers recorded, it will be out. I've just got some animations and stuff to um, to voice over the top of. Yeah, I I am actually a little bit ahead of the game. I've got three train driver rules videos filmed and ready to go. So it's it's really quite irritating. <laughs> 156 Andrew, Richard, do train drivers eat carrots? Um, <coughs> helps you see in the dark, yeah. Oh, coming down towards Hayward Heath now on the Brighton main line. Uh, we'll stop at Hayward Heath and then we'll do another round of locomotive location delivery. So again, we were talking about the Simbid signals. That's your exit signal from the section up there on the right. Um, it's also a good place to get some brakes in for Hayward Heath. So probably about the AWS magnet. Let's drop some brakes in there. 
If we had the route indicators on this, we'd be 40 mile an hour through the crossover. We're going to give it a little bit more brakes. I feel like we're coming in a bit fast. The sky done really weird things there as we come out the tunnel. Did you see that? It was looking all clear and nice and some nice orangey sunset colours, which is what I intended for this stream. And then it went all cloudy and horrible. It's a little bit annoying. Um, we are an eight car train heading for the eight car mark. Doors on the left hand side. And it should be somewhere up near the lift, I want to say. There we go, three to nine. So we're in brake step two, which is going to come back to brake step one for the stop. You always want to stop if you can in no more than brake step one, or if you're driving a locomotive, you want to stop on a rising brake, uh, which will give you a nice smooth stop. We are an eight car train, we're on the eight car mark. Our doors are on the left hand side. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. Who's promoting YouTube channels in the chat? See, the, the mod's doing a very good job there. Bluegrass, bing bong, we will shortly be arriving at Hayward's Heath. We can, we can do that as well. The train now standing at platform number three is the Southern Service to London Victoria, calling at Gatwick Airport, East Croydon, Clapham Junction and London Victoria. This train is ready to leave, mind us, please mind us. Uh, wait until we're not ready to leave. We've got we've got a whole minute. We're running early. Must have been speeding. Okay, guys, locomotive delivery location. Who have we got? Third number on my screen is Pig and Bob, number eleven. Let's play locomotive delivery location. I'm gonna give you number eleven, guys. You've got ten seconds to give me that locomotive delivery and. <laughs> Can you get from that? Any clues as to your location from that, uh, that little snippet there? As always, do let me know. Um, LW Rail, what just happened to the sky? Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, this is not a Train Sea World 3 route, it's a Train Sea World 2 route. So all the kind of dynamic weather and the other bits and bobs that are on there don't work as they should. So the dynamic weather has now cleared <laughs> in a very dramatic fashion. And we're back to having a nice clear sky. Okay, we are off. Gatwick Airport is our next station stop. We are still good for 90 as we depart Hayward Heath. What are we reckoning? Uh, Train Geeks is class 37 at Derby, JLSS station in the UK. Uh, Xavier, hello from Barcelona. Loving the live stream. Fantastic. How's the weather in Barcelona? I bet it's nicer than it is here. 156 Andrews also going. Class 37 at Derby. Train get Colas 37 at Derby. Could be, could be. The Southern... Oh, excuse me. The Southern Rex. This route needs a remake. The Dovetail Games better do it. I, I would definitely like to see this, this remade for Train Sim World 3. It's a really nice route. It's one of those things though, guys. And, and I'll be interested in the chat. Would you be willing to pay for an update on this route? Or do you think it's something Dovetail Games should deliver free of charge? What's, uh, what's your opinion? As we pass over Copyhold Junction... I'm really miffed by the lighting levels in the cab. It really breaks the immersion. Uh, Michael Littlejohns is class 66 at Chesterfield. Bluegrass at a small price would be okay. Uh, Xavier, actually, it's cold in Barcelona. It's, do you know what? It's been quite pleasant here. I've, I've been out in the garden earlier, and it's been it's not been too bad actually. JLS free of charge, yes, pay, no. Right, Leo Allen, welcome aboard the Southern Service to London, Victoria. Calling at Gatwick Airport, East Croydon, Clapham Junction and London, Victoria. 
as we are rounding the corner. Oh, no! <laughs> that could have ended badly. On to the beautiful Moose Valley Viaduct. signal we're still good for 90 um, GJ Barnard I will be willing to pay but shouldn't be full price uh, John Luke Frank I think it should be free they have updated others for free uh, John Stoffields is that sorry I would pay but I'd also like the 700 on it Leo Allen free yeah a little bit of little bit of division there for me personally guys I I don't expect and I know you know this is divisive this is purely my opinion I don't expect the devs to update something necessarily. Something that works, I mean this route does more or less work. Something that works, I don't expect them to, to go in and update it and do that for free. I, I would expect to expect to pay for that. However, I think a better way of doing it would be to offer you something extra as part of the upgrade. So, um, it looks like we've got a 700 coming. Possibly, maybe, who knows. We may have a 700 coming. So it'd be really nice if we had something like Horsham to Blackfriars added to the route. So you could do like Horsham to Blackfriars on the, or Horsham to London Bridge with 700 services and have that as part of a Brighton mainline update. So if you want the updated Brighton mainline, you pay for it, but you pay for that extra bit of the route, if you know what I mean. So you get a lot more functionality. That, that would be the way I would do it personally. Uh, Chris repping that Dad Brown merch. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all about the merch today. I've, I bit the bullet and bought myself some merch. The cups are really nice. They've got kind of different colour handles and rims on them. They're, they're quite nice. As we come round into Balkan Tunnel, hopefully. There we go. Yeah, the lighting on this is not great, is it? If you are going to buy Dad Round Match, I don't recommend the hoodie. Um, I, I had a hoodie turn up today and the quality is not great. That's, that's the way to sell something, isn't it? Tell someone not to buy it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I should have slowed down to 80, shouldn't I? Sorry, I, I've gone a bit fast through the tunnel there, completely distracted. The line speed did drop through there. As we come over Balkan Tunnel Junction, we're still 90. Uh, incidentally, back in the day, when 319s used to run on this route, from this point, the line speed went up to 100. It used to be 100 from here all the way to the other side of Gatwick. Jean-Luc Frank, I'm still waiting in vain for the West Coastway, Brighton to Portsmouth. Yeah, see, I, I want an extension to the East Coastway. I want uh, Eastbourne to Ashford with a 171. Um, but the, the West Coast way would be a good one too, but a lot of stations on that. I done the West Coast way from Hastings to Eastley, well the East Coast way and the West Coast way from Hastings to Eastley the other day. That is a long old journey. Uh, Aeronautics 237, hello, how are we doing? Uh, 156 Andrew, no, we're not having tea biscuits for that. <laughs> Jack HST Productions, how comes the line speed was reduced? Do you know what, Jack? I don't know the official reason why it was reduced. Yes, yeah, see, if we are going to get a 700, guys... If we are going to get a 700, we want to see the depot here completely and utterly populated with 700s. There we go, just holding that speed at 90 as we approach three bridges. I remember back in the day, showing my age, cross-country voyagers used to berth in the sidings at Free Bridges. I know, I know. I've, I've had my fair share of voyages up and down the Brighton Main Line. Something that is no longer possible. So I, I got that in, I got that in. Jack HSD Productions, I think the 171s are going to EMR. What are they going to replace them with then, Jack? Hey, Peter Green, bonjour. Comment ça va? Green 
green as we go underneath the road that goes somewhere. <laughs> so just coming up on our left, we've got Crawley New Yard Aggregate Siding. I do sign in there, but I have been in there for quite some time. Uh, Hannah, that's not a bad shout, because we don't really have any routes up that way, do we, in, at the moment for Trains in World? So some, something like the, the, the Great Eastern Main Line. I was in Ipswich the other day, actually. Um, something like the Great Eastern Main Line would be brilliant. Stadler flirts on it, we could 66s, we could get some 90s maybe as well. Or are we just dreaming? <laughs> Right, Tinsley Green Junction is probably a good place to start getting some brakes in. We're going to use the magnet. Uh, no, we won't. We'll get some brakes in now for Gatwick. Otherwise, we are we're going to be overshooting the platform and having tea and biscuits, and we don't want. I think I've overcooked this one a little bit. Let's get some brake in. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Now we're good. Can we see the runway? Where are we? Is that in two or three? Oh, brake step three. Bad driving, bad driving. We are an eight car train heading for the eight car mark. One, five, six, stop flirting. I need to go for a ride on the Greater Anglia, Stadler. So I was saying that to someone the other day. Um, I've yet to have a ride on one. Yeah, no stop car markers at Gatwick. Well, we've got 10 and 12s at the end there, but we've got no other stop car markers at Gatwick. Which is just really annoying, if I'm being honest. So we are eight cars well past the marker. Doors on the left. Now for I mean, yeah, it would be really Peter Green brakes. No, we, we're all right. We're all right. The, the electric tires have got good brakes on them. We're doing all right. Uh, JLS, they finally fixed the realistic sounding wind on Scott Rail finally. Yeah, JLS, we do. I, I do need to have another go on the Edinburgh Glasgow. I was. I think it's fair to say. I, I've only streamed Edinburgh Glasgow once, and I, I made a couple of videos with it as well. I was reasonably critical of a couple of things on the route. I was fair, I was balanced. I did say that the route looks absolutely gorgeous and I stand by that. The artwork on that route is superb. But there was a couple of things that I was quite critical of and they have released an update to it and a lot of the things have been fixed. So I think it's only fair. Uh, we, we might even do that on the next stream. I, yeah, we'll, I tell you what, we will do that on the next stream. It's only fair that we revisit the Scotland Express route and kind of, you know, now it's been updated, have another look at it and uh, and I'll give you my, my opinions on the updated route. Uh, Aeronautics 237 LLL reminds me of catchphrase. It kind of might be where I got the idea from. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Oh, 156 Andrew. You're the third one on my screen with number 10. We've already had that. Um, so we're going to go with the next one, which is Train Geek. Who would like number 9? 10 seconds, guys. Locomotive Bye. Livery. And location, please. I reckon that might have helped. Do let me know your thoughts as always. Uh, Callum McCabe, whenever I drive the class 377 on the Brighton Main on the Xbox, the rear gangway opens and you're unable to close it. Do you have this issue? You mean like that, bud? I, I don't know that we're unable to close it because I haven't tried. But it, it certainly is open. Uh, Jake B two thousand and three. What do you think about the seven hundred coming? It looks nice. It's a. I I I've said for a very long time. I've said for a very long time we will get a seven hundred. It was always going to happen, wasn't it? It was always going to happen. Um, be interesting to get some more information on it though. Sort of release dates and, and find out a bit more about it. Leo Allen, the video is way behind the comments for me. It's really annoying. J 
Jump, jump to the live video, Leo. Uh, Chris, Kodas 37, not sure where. Jack HST, HNRC class 37, Derby, Laserjet class 37, Aeronautics class 37. As we come through Hawley. ALW Alcolas 37 at Newcastle. Transport from Berkshire is going 37, Birmingham New Street. Peter Green says, is it a train? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a train. Uh, train Geek says, Defo Colas 37, still sticking with Derby. Gregory Allen, there is a locomotive livery location for everyone. It's uh, I do tend to vary them and sort of move them around the country as much as I possibly can. So there, there is one for everyone. There is one for everyone. Oh, HUD off. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Leo. My apologies. Got to agree. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. So our next stop on this service will be East Croydon. We're only doing the run one run up to London Victoria today, then that will be it. Um, reason being, like I said earlier, I've got a couple of voiceovers to record for the uh, upcoming Train Drivers Rules video. We've got 111 of you lovely people in tonight, which is fantastic. So if you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. Laserjet, are you st have I still not used any? I'm sure I've used some of your locomotive delivery location pictures. I'm, I'm sure I must have done at some point. I'll, uh, I will have a look, though. I will have a look. So we're just coming past Salford's. Line speed is 90. It's going to drop to um, 80 in a few minutes just around the corner at Red Hill. I had to double check then. It is 80, not 85. Just before um, where the Red Hill diverging, the Red Hill slow lines go off um, at Ellswood. The line speed will drop to 80 just as we go into Red Hill Tunnel. We're on a very slight uphill gradient here in real life as well. Does the game give us that? It does, yeah, 0.4%. Uh, Joshua Lang, I bet you played the plus 700 coming to Train Super 3. Do you know what, Joshua? I I haven't played any class 700 services on Train Super 3. Is there a class 700 coming to Train Super 3? I, just, I, I don't know anything. The 156 Andrew, close it at the next stop, Richard. Yeah, we'll when we get to East Croydon, we'll take a walk down and see if we can close it. It's getting dark. Just going to shut back the power there. The line speed is going to drop to 80 miles an hour as we come through Ellswood. Might need a little bit of brake just to bring that in. Just a tad. A little bit more. There we go. Yes, the line, not that you can see very well. <laughs> Um, the line's going off to our left there, go via Red Hill, Merston, course to south and join back up with us at Stoatsness Junction. We are taking the fast lines, otherwise known as the quarry lines. And then we're back up to 90, got to wait for our... Wait for our rear end to pass that, pure guesswork, and off we go again. Uh, Julian Heap, Richard, is that a safety system of some sort that makes it sound like the dashboard is rattling? No, that is a simulated rattling sound. So this door here, which is known as the CACU door, Cab Communications Unit door. I know, it sounds like something else, doesn't it? Um, that door is rattling, and that does rattle a little bit in real life, so that's the noise you can hear. Bluegrass, Dadrail, when is the next day out with Dadrail? So, I am going to... Germany in three weeks and there will be three vlogs from Germany um, and then I will be doing the Swanage Diesel Gala in May so if anyone's going to be at Swanage in May um, I will be there for a couple of days not sure what days yet I think the Friday and the Saturday but of course that will all be vlogged as well so it would be great to get those on the channel um, yeah Chase from Berkshire, why are the fast lines called the quarry lines? I'm not entirely sure. 
Uh, my, my assumption would be that there used to be a quarry in the area or, or something along those lines, but yeah, I, I don't exactly know. It's got very dark. Um, David Fuelis, what are your PC specs? Uh, so I'm running, I've got an Intel Pentium i9 11600K processor, I think it is. Um, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM and an RTX 3090. Uh, currently getting, I've got 60 FPS at the moment in Train Sim. Not that that's surprising because it's very dark outside. Um, but I do have it maxed out at 60. And I am streaming from the same computer as well. Uh, Peter Green, yeah, so we will be getting an ICE. Our, our plan while we're in Germany, uh, we're flying out to Hamburg, visiting uh, Miniature Wonderland. I'm going out with a couple of colleagues of mine, uh, colleagues and mates. Um, we're flying out to Hamburg, going to Miniature Wonderland. Um, spending a night in Hamburg, probably drinking, possibly. <laughs> Who knows, be rude not to. Um, we're then going to be getting the ICE from Hamburg to uh, Wuppertal to go on the suspension monorail. Uh, from Wuppertal we go on to Dusseldorf. Uh, we're staying in Dusseldorf overnight and we've got a day in that sort of area, train spotting um, and then flying back from uh, Cologne Airport that evening. So yeah, there'll be, there will be three vlogs that come out from that. So one at Miniature Wonderland, one in uh, Wuppertal on the dangly monorail thingy. Um, I think it's called the... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I want to call it the Dangly Barn, but it's not the Dangly Barn. It's the, the, is it Schwieber Barn or something like that, officially it's called? Tom Scott done a video on it, and the Tim Traveller as well. Yeah, and then a bit of train spotting in um, around Cologne, Dusseldorf, Essen, Dortmund, that sort of area. Should be good, should be good. David Twellis, very nice. Aeronautics were a meh computer then, yeah. <laughs> Trouble is with computers, as soon as you bought one, it's out of date, isn't it? So I've had this one about two years now. It's uh, I need to get a new SSD drive for it, though, because it's getting very full up very quickly. Mr. Quicker Gaming, hello, how are we doing? Uh, Anakin, no worries, great to have you here. Train Geek, Schwieber Barn, that's the one, that's the one. So we're on a slight downhill gradient here as we approach Purley. We're going through what is known as the Covered Way. This used to be a tunnel when the line opened. Coming alongside the A23. There's Audi garage, Kia garage, VW garage to our left in real life. Can I ask a Callum's question? Where's Callum's question? Um, Callum, how do train drivers learn routes? I'm a bus driver and we get to ride top deck with a notepad and pen and drive in service with an instructor. Yeah, so Callum, um, as train drivers, the best way to learn it is to go out and actually jump in the cab with another driver and learn it. If you're lucky enough to have an instructor driver, then you might get to drive it yourself. Um, you can also use uh, video route learning, which you, you can't solely use videos. You can't just watch videos. You do have to go out on the route as well. Um, but videos, maps, all sorts of other bits and bobs that you can use as well to learn the route. But yeah, by far the best way is to jump in the cab and actually go out and see it, or if you can, go with an instructor driver and drive the route. Uh, Jean-Luc Frank, if you flew from Dusseldorf Airport, then they have the modern suspended light rail link in the state. Oh, I wish I'd known that sooner. Coming through Purley. It's got very dark very quickly. <laughs> so our line speed is still 90, we're just going to let it coast. Next station stop will be East Croydon. Not much to look at in the stream. Right? Uh, that's not our red signal. I hope that's not our red signal. There we go. So the next thing I'm looking out for is Pearly Oaks, which is just there. We're going to get a warning board for a 60 mile an hour restriction as we come through Pearly Oaks. So just about there. And there is a little bridge coming up. Which we 
can't see. There it is. Just about made out the side of the bridge. That is a good breaking point. So, our headlights seem really, really bad on this. I can't see absolutely anything out the window. The lighting is really bad. This is not stereotypical at all. This doesn't. This does not look good. So our 60 mile an hour starts at South Croydon, which we're just coming up to. Break set one at the bridge from 90 brings us down really well for that. Hey, exploring all UK stations, how are we doing? Oh, tree to the face. So yeah, there's our 60. So that's pretty much bang on there. Um, Breaks at one at the bridge. Epileptic fits taking place. Playing with the headlights, but yeah, the light, the lighting is really bad. I don't remember the Brighton mainline lighting being this bad. Anakin, yeah, the cab too bright. The cab is most definitely too bright, but that's not because I've got any lights turned on or anything. That's just bit buggy or something maybe two yellows okay so I'm speeding because we've got a 45 we've actually got a 30 because we're going into platform number one so let's get down for that 30 there it is just coming up on the left we are eight for the eight East Croydon this will be an offside door release and we're also heading for a red signal, aren't we? So let's get a bit more speed down. So when we're coming into a station against a red, as I've said many times before, we're stopping for the red rather than the station. So we're coming in a lot slower than what we normally would. Making sure we're doing no more than 20 mile an hour over the AWS magnet. Uh, there's an 8 and 9 car mark on the right-hand side there. Yeah, so these trains in real life you do lose a lot of visibility on that offside. And we're stopped on a red, so we go brake step free, set our DRA and put it into neutral, which is known as securing the train. We are an eight car train, we are... Oh, look at that, it's right on the eight car mark. Doors open on the right hand side. Post your numbers now for the locomotive delivery location. Uh, Callum, are stars easy to drive in real life just like that? Yeah, the, I don't think driving a train is, is... I've made a video on this, how hard is it to drive a train. Uh, I think in general, the actual physical operating of the train, operating the controls and getting it to move, is pretty basic in most trains. Um, there are exceptions, tap changes and, and stuff like that could be a bit more difficult, a bit more tricky. But getting it to move is is relatively easy in, in most cases. Stopping it, on the other hand, that's a completely different ball game. <laughs> but getting it to move is pretty straightforward. It's it's all the other stuff, all the rules and regulations, and all the kind of non-technical skills that go with it that make it a little bit more difficult. Um, Wait until 8.48. Okay, I know you're posting for locomotive delivery location. Let's sprint down the platform. See if we can't sort these back doors out. Running, 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 running. I've got to tell you a story about East Croydon in a minute. I was about 14, 15 years old. Let me past! Oh, we'll have to go around the other way. Yep, yeah, no, that doesn't work. That's bugged. <laughs> Never mind. We're not going to lose any sleep over it. So, and I know we're running late now. East Croydon Station. I was about 14 or 15 years old, maybe a bit younger, who knows. There was a guy cleaning these windows. Literally like a window cleaner guy on the inside, cleaning the windows. Steam train comes through. 
windows covered. <laughs> the look on this guy's face was just priceless. Okie dokie guys, locomotive location livery, LW Rail, you're the third one on my screen with number 19. Let's get back in the cab and then we will do that. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, LW Rails for number 19. Here we go, guys. 10 seconds for that Locomotive Livery and Location. Uh, it's close to the okay, I've still got the cab door open at the back of the train. Still the cab door open at the back of the train there, but it's letting us go, so we'll take it. <laughs> 45 mile an hour out of East Croydon, then we are up to 60 and 70 just around the corner. Um, uh, Peter Green, we tried, that's the important thing, definitely. Wardle Road, evening all, another day of 66 traction today, how did you get on with it? There's our 60 board. Not bad locos. Not bad locos at all, the 66s in reality. I know they're not particularly popular amongst enthusiasts, but from a driver's point of view, they'll get you home. That's the main thing. Uh, Callum, looks like a 37, Colas 37 at Birmingham New Street. Ben Clayton's going Colas 37, Nottingham. Ah, oh, this... Do you know what? If we were doing two runs on the, on the stream tonight, I would just end it here because the lighting is so bad. It's more of a challenge for me. If I, if I can drive it hudless in this lighting, then I'm doing something right. Uh, Pep EMU fans, says Colas Rail, Class 37 at Preston. David, what cargo do you haul when driving for real in real life? So, um, it's normally aggregates. Um, where, where I'm driving from, it's normally aggregates, but obviously some companies, uh, other areas we've got containers, um, chemicals, fuel, so many things, so many things. Uh, DET, yeah, I've already already addressed that one, train driver's rules video. <laughs> it's in the works. Right, we're good for 70 now, aren't we? We are, that's what I thought. Uh, Davidoff, yeah, I believe I have. Uh, John Walsh, welcome to Dev Round. subscribe and great to have you here, bud. Uh, Joshua Lang, can I ask, have you ever had a fatality uh, by driving on trains? Fortunately, Joshua, no, I haven't. I, I do know people that have, quite a few of my colleagues have. Uh, it is just one of those things that kind of, you know, sadly, it's one of those things that, that just goes with the job. Um, some people will go their whole career without ever experiencing one and touch wood. I'm hoping that's going to be me. I'm going to be one of those people. Um, then there are people that pass out and on their first day they, they have a fatality. So very, very hit and miss. Um, but no, as, as it stands at the moment, fortunately, I've not been involved in anything like that. Uh, Peter Green, how far can you see in real life at night? Depends on the traction, Peter. Um, so if you're driving a Class 73, your headlight is literally a 40 watt light bulb. And no, I'm not joking. The same sort you would put in your house. Um, it's it's never really, I mean, as dark as you see it here, it's, it's never really this dark. I mean, we're kind of driving through South London. There's going to be a lot of ambient lighting from street lights and, and other bits and bobs going on. So this, this is, like the station there, for example, this, this is artificially dark. It's never really going to be this dark. So if you're out in the countryside, it's going to be darker, but it's it's never like cave dark, like pitch black. There's always some sort of ambient light or some sort of moonlight. Um, so yeah, th th this is a little bit unrealistic. Actually, this is very unrealistic in the lighting levels. Yeah, the, the pie train, we were saying, this is, this is a train sim world 2 route, and the lighting on it, compared to the new routes we get on train sim world 3, the lighting on this is just, it's poor. It's, it's very poor. As we come down to Streatham Common. Yeah, so Joshua, if a driver was involved in a fatality, they'd be supported um, by the company. So you'd be offered counselling and, and uh, anything you need, really. You'd take as much time off work as you need. 
some people want to get straight back into it. They want to get back and, and go over it. Um, some people, you know, find that they need a few months off. They need counselling to overcome it, overcome the trauma. It, it depends on the individual, but the company are normally going to support your needs. Uh, and there are indeed, there are some people that, that come back after fatalities, or should I say never come back after fatalities because they simply can't, can't drive again. Um, but it could be that you come back after a fatality. You might, you might have like, I don't know, 20 hours with an instructor going over that same bit of route until you're comfortable doing it. So it's, it affects different people in different ways, and the companies are really good at supporting you through that. So there's, there's absolutely no pressure to sort of come back the next day sort of thing. Ben, uh, yes, Ben Clayton rightly points out, headlights are to be seen and not to see. Yeah, no, that is um, completely correct, Ben, especially on a lot, of the, a lot of the older trains. If you go back sort of two generations ago, they didn't have headlights. Uh, there is a 60 coming up, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> We're just coming up towards Balham. Let's get some brakes in. But yeah, this this view is unrealistically dark. So if I'm managing to drive it with no lighting at all, then I'm, I'm quite impressed. Uh, Chris Hillard, you did post that question earlier. I do apologise. On routes that run east to west and vice versa, is there still an up and a down line? Yeah, typically all lines are up and down um, on the National Rail Network. So up is normally towards London or towards uh, Edinburgh if you're in Scotland or to or excuse me or towards um, or towards a major location so tip typically the up line was the line that headed towards the railway company's headquarters historically um, but yeah e even if it's east to west they're normally always being up and a down As we come down through Wandsworth Road, I want to say the speed limit. Ha no, it's still 60 through here, isn't it? Yeah, and then we got the. That's saying 45. That doesn't start till Poe parts, does it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my default excuse, guys. Freight train driver. I, I, when I'm coming through here, I'm obeying something called the two thirds rule or, or the differential speed rule. So I'm generally going a lot slower than this anyway. Two yellows. Let's get some brakes in. This section that we're going through has recently been re-signalled, so this is incorrect. There's actually an extra signal um, in this particular section now. Two yellows again. Let's keep the speed down. Coming around towards Clapham Junction. Uh, G Jenna, hello, and uh, I saw you just subscribed as well, so do welcome to the channel. Welcome to the darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. No, we're not singing. We're not doing. We're not playing that game tonight. Uh, Joshua, yeah, no, that's a common misconception. That that isn't a thing. If you have free fatalities, you can get a payout and then leave the job. That yeah, that that is a misconception. That is, I can assure you, that is not a thing. So two yellows, Clapham Junction, one five six Andrew. How busy is Clapham? You've got none of the southwestern train stuff simulated through here, so uh, not very is the answer to that. Two yellows again. So I'm just letting the train coast at the moment. We're doing uh, 40. We don't want to be chasing round. Don't want to be chasing red signals. That's never a good thing to, to do. Um, if we're chasing red signals, then we're increasing our risk of having a SPAD or having a TPWS train protection warning system activation. So what we want to do is just hang back. Idealistically, we want those signals to be stepping up to greens. So yeah, we just. You know, you're not you're not going to get there any quicker. You might as well hand back. It's a nicer ride for the passengers as well. Two yellows. So another disclaimer, guys. I don't sign the route from here to Victoria. I swing a left down there somewhere. Um, this is known as Poe Parts Junction. I swing a left down there and go towards Long Edge and Battersea. Um, I don't sign this bit of route into Victoria. So, if anything goes wrong now, it's not my fault. 
<laughs> not taking responsibility for it. Ah! Oh! I say? I mean, what can I say? I, I was talking about being a freight train driver and not having to worry about the speeds, and I'm normally going a lot slower, and answering your questions. And that is a prime example. I I'm green. I'm on a simulator. I'm not even. I'm not even driving a real train. I'm on a computer, and I'm completely distracted by the chat and everything else that's going on. And I go go straight through the station without stopping. That, that is an absolute prime example that it was completely and utterly accidental. That, that was not intentional. It's just completely and utterly slipped my mind that I was supposed to stop at that station. And I have spoken about that in my How Hard Was It To Drive A Train video about non-technical skills, concentration, situational awareness. And that is a complete and utter prime example of me losing situational awareness and concentration and just going straight through a station. There you go. Living proof. It happens. <laughs> Even on simulators, it happens. That's... What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? That's... Um, so in real life, when we get to London, Victoria, I, I expect a lot of abuse from passengers telling me off. Uh, G. Jenna, very sorry. <laughs> Yeah, check the HUD. Stop at Clapham Junction, 1.5 miles away. Um, uh, that... <laughs> you can have another one of those. Um, so what I'd be doing in reality now is phoning up the signaller and going, yeah, I've just failed to court Clapham Junction. Uh, I'm just going to report myself. I mean, at this point, you're not going to be allowed to set back into, into Clapham Junction. That's not going to happen. Um... <laughs> Davidoff, you can't complete the run now. I can still get to Victoria, Davidoff. Um, wow. Yeah, no, that, that that is a prime example of distraction and how it works in its simplest form. One yellow red ahead. Steep downhill onto this one. That is, yeah, no, that, that is... Um, Judging your distance towards red signals in the dark is always difficult. It's made even worse when you don't have any headlights. Is that my one that's just come off there? I think it is, isn't it? Oh, we'd be 20 going in. Should we do this again? Post, Post your numbers, numbers now for locomotive delivery location. location. I can't believe I've done that. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> Nobody tell my boss. Please don't tell my boss. Uh, Callum, can train drivers listen to music? I'm allowed as long as I'm not distracting, offensive, it can only be heard in the cab. No, we're not allowed, Callum. Um, I think we should be allowed to listen to music, but no, it's, it's a no-no for us, I'm afraid. Yeah, Peter Green, um, get out of the cab and hide at Victoria, I think would be the better option, wouldn't it? It's <laughs> oh, it's when I have to apologise as well to the station staff because they're going to they're gonna get it in the ear. Oh dear, oh dear. Hey Joe, how are we doing? You've just missed me, you've just um, missed me fail to call at Clapham Junction completely by accident. Too, too busy reading the chat and not concentrating. Uh, Max's trains high. What are the working hours like for a train driver? So, it, Max, it's normally shift work. So, depending on what company you do, will depend on exactly how the shifts work. Um, 35 hours a week is kind of the standard working week. However, uh, it's normally done on what they call an average working week, which means one week you could do 60 hours and the next week you might do 20. 
um, and each company's kind of got their own rostering arrangements and their own shift arrangements. Passenger shifts tend to be a lot more set out, a lot more regulated. Freight shifts tend to be quite... I mean, for example, on my company, I don't know what I'm working next week. Until I get my, my rotation on Thursday, my roster on Thursday, I don't know what shifts I'm working next week. Whereas passenger company, you probably do. So it just depends on your individual company. Right, six foot away from the buffer stops without hitting them. DRA on, into neutral, brake step free. We're on the stops. Doors on the left. It's not going to let me complete the scenario. <laughs> I can't believe I've done that. This train crawls at Clapham Junction in London, Victoria. Uh, no, it doesn't. That didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, you get another one of those now for that. <laughs> oh, we can't complete the run. I tell you what, just for that, I better put this screen up so I don't show anything I'm not supposed to. Uh, we haven't finished locomotive location delivery yet, have we? So just for that, we are going to do... We're going to do a very short run on... Hey DT, thank you very much, bud. Uh, we're going to do a very short run on a very short run indeed. Uh, why can't I find it? What's going on here? On there. Okay, I think I can safely put that back on now. We'll do a very short run on here. Drive this area from Dartford to Gravesend. Now I want to do a nighttime run, a dark run. Twenty eighteen. Uh Graves into London Victor. Um That might be a bit too dark. Is there anything a little bit about an hour earlier? No, twenty eighteen should be fine actually. Third of April, clear. Okay, we we are gonna do this one run because I actually want to finish the run. And this is a train team world free route, so you'll be able to see the difference in lighting as well for, for everyone who's not seen before. Formula 47, hey Richard, what would you say is the most iconic train? Mine is the class 370 because it inspired the swallow livery as well as tilting, which is the precursor to the 390 as well as the joint bogey. Uh, Formula 47, I mean, would, would it be boring to say HST? I, You know what it is. You know what the most iconic train of all time is. I'll tell you what the most iconic train of all time is. Wrong button. It's all going wrong. The most iconic train of all time is a pacer. Who would disagree? Uh, officially, Yan. I very much doubt that because I, I genuinely, I don't have it installed. Um, so that that's that's really unlikely. Okay, right. We, we, we're going to do a quick run. Great. We're on the uh, southeast and high speed. We're going to do a quick run now. Gravesend down to Dartford. Um, master key on. Let's get some safety systems on as well. And you instantly see how much better the lighting looks on this. Um, headlights. Tail lights off. Headlights on. The, the the headlights are actually far too bright on this, if I'm being honest. There's the night ones. So, <laughs> you've gone from not having enough lighting to having too much lighting. The 465 is beautiful on this. It's really, really well done. So we're, ju we're just going to... We'll actually... I, I just want to finish the run. I just want to say that I have finished the run. Uh, I can't agree. Peter Green nailed it. Peter Green pacer. Yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. DT, it's the Flying Scotsman. Uh, fair point, Richard, but still deserves the sound effect. 
Train Greek, what's your worst favourite train? Pacer. Aeronauts' brilliant delivery, including the misclick. I'm glad you approve. Uh, where are we stopping? Ah, oh, so we're fast as well. Green Hive and Dartford. So I do sign this route in real life as well, guys. And I used to sign 465s as a shunter driver. But I, I just want to say that we've actually completed a run. Because <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. Uh, ben Clayton, regen break. Yeah, we can do. I mean, it is on by default in real life. You don't have to turn it on. Um, wait until 2020. Let's go. This is a nice train to drive. We should be able to do this hubless as well. Green. out of here then we'll be up to 70 uh, we're stopping at Green Hive and at Dartford only um, Matty Mika are you allowed to show us any routes trains early uh, absolutely not no <laughs> no I'm, unfortunately I, I definitely can't uh, how many coaches are we on this guys um, looks like we might be an 8 or a 10 does it tell me on there? Uh, eight car, yeah. There we go. Tok, what does the regen brake do? So, quite similar to a hybrid car, when you put the brake on, it turns the um, the energy that you create braking is put back into the third rail for another train to pick up. So it, it turns the motors into generators, basically. Creates resistance, which then creates energy, and that's put back into the third rail. Right, we should be clear, let's go. Okay, let's play a game. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. Yeah, um, the pie train, is that lighting? Realistic, look how powerful. No, actually, the headlights are probably a little bit too bright, if I'm being honest. And they would be more focused straight ahead rather than sort of up here. This area up here would be lit. It'd be sort of more, more straight ahead. But it's not too bad. It's, it's a lot nicer and a lot more realistic than um, than the other line, that's for sure. So we're good for 70 along here. Um, let me know if you want the game volume up or down, guys, because this train is somewhat louder. I can see, actually, my levels are going into the yellow, so I am going to take that down a tad, so hopefully that's better. Um, and who have we got? Locomotive location livery. Callum, you're the third one on my screen with number 12. Curtis Hall, welcome to Denver. Let's driver. play locomotive livery location. Going to give you number 12. 10 seconds, guys, for that locomotive livery. And okay. Let me know your thoughts in the chat. What do you reckon that is, guys? What do you reckon that is? Do let me know. Uh, Dad, round game volume down a tad. Is it still a little bit loud? I can, I can pull it down a little bit further as well. As we come through a green hive. No, we don't. Sorry, uh, North Fleet. Just about to come over top the high speed lines. Beautiful arcing on the third rail there. Uh, there's the high speed lines below us. What's that javelin doing there? That shouldn't be there. That's definitely in the wrong place. Where are we? We're in the off position as we come through Swanscombe. Yes, yeah, so you can just see how much better the lighting is on this. There is a big difference between the Tracy Well 3 and the Tracy Well 2 lighting. Uh, what are we reckoning? Pep EMU's fans says Carlos Rail Class 37 Preston Train Geek. Carlos 37 Derby, going to keep saying it. Aeronautics Rail Operations Group Class 37, it's the only one I know. Uh, Penguin says 37, no idea on the location. Uh, first stop was Green Hive, wasn't it? 
Yes. Uh, so we're an eight-car train. Greenhive is our first stop. It's our first stop and our penultimate stop. Pep is sticking with Preston. Peter Green, Greenhive for Blue Water Shopping Centre. We're just going into the tunnel now. The station's just out the other side of the tunnel. I don't like the texture on the inside of this tunnel. It doesn't look very good. It should be... It's, it's more of sort of a modern tunnel. That should kind of be brickwork in the tunnel there. 66. Got the realistic branding patch on there with the uh, the MRL. Mendit Rail Limited. And uh, this is Greenhive. The networker, the 465. There's still no stop car markers on the platform though. Is an absolutely beautiful train to drive on here. On the monitors. We are an eight car train. We're on the eight car mark. Doors are on the left. Yeah, the sound effects and everything on, on this train are brilliant. They really are. Uh, what have we got on there? LW Rail. Why did I get timed out? I am not entirely sure. It doesn't tell me. Look at the passengers getting off of that. That's... That's mentally busy. I like that as well. If we turn our cab light on and off, look, it reflects inside. That's nice. That is really, really busy. Uh, wait until 26 and 30. We're going. Got a green. Next station is Dartford. Next and final station is Dartford. Uh, what are we doing? We want to go into forward first, don't we? W. There we go. Let's do this from the outside. Because it's, it's a nice sounding train. Sparking and arcing on the gap there. Yeah, no, it, it would be really, really great. It'd be like shooting stars or something up there, or reflections on my windscreen. <coughs> it, it would be really, really great to get the, the Brighton Main Line to have the Train Scene World free treatment. Because as you can see, guys, it, it just looks... Especially a night drive like this, the lighting is just is superb. Uh, Leo, so we've we done the Brighton Main Line, and I... It was a bit. We had a couple of issues. We had one issue. Driver failed to stop. Might have been my fault. <laughs> um, so to make up for it, it's like a little bonus run. We're doing a Gravesend to Dartford. We we are almost at the end of the stream. Uh, yeah, Aeronautics. The the, the four six five. The acceleration on the four six five is really good. It's one of the, I believe it's one of the fastest DC third rail tr uh, trains acceleration wise. There's a 50 there. We should probably break for that. We will have one more round of locomotive location delivery before we finish the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Uh, Northern Princess Productions, hello, welcome. Great to have you here. Uh, we are just about finishing up after a, an unsuccessful run on the Brighton Main Line. Should we put it like that? Let's put it like that. I I, I was going to do this route today, South East and High Speed. That was my intention. I was going to do a um, 
two yellows, 20 at the bottom of the hill. I was going to do a Favisham to St Pancras, but I turned my computer on and then Joe, the British Ace, was streaming this route, so I decided not to, um, which is why we ended up doing London Commuter. But I do need to get on this route and do some more on this route because it is a lovely route. Yeah, Peter Green, the 465 top speed is 75, but of course you used to have, and it's before my time on the railway, but you used to have the 365s um, working on the South Eastern Network with like the Express Network, and I think they could do 100. Platform number two, one yellow, 20's coming up, it's just by the point work. And Network Panda, Davrel, can I choose who has the number? So the way I do it, Network Panda, is you get the, the little notification jingle to post your numbers, and then I pick the third one that comes up on my screen. Um, and the reason we do the third is just because it's a little bit more random. Then if we go with the first one, um, it, it turns out it's normally always the same person who's got it in their chat bar ready to send it as soon as they hear it. So we go with the third one, which gives, gives people a little bit more opportunity. We are red ahead, we are 8 for the 8, we are locomotive location delivery, we are number 6, as soon as we come to a stand. It's a shame this route only goes to Dartford. <laughs> Yeah, the head the headlight on the train is well and truly too powerful. We'll take that. That's close enough. Close enough. So we are let's put the cab light on. Step three. DRA is set. Into neutral. Doors on the left. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Going to give you that number six, guys. Ten seconds. Locomotive Livery Location. <laughs> this is your last one, then we're going to have a reveal. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts, guys. What do you think? Do let me know. I'll give you a silver map. Oh, speeding. Look at that. Yeah, no, that's... You're not getting tea and biscuits. We've had enough tea and biscuits for one day. Unless it's in a dad round mug. If it's in a dad round mug, you can have tea and biscuits. Um... <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Now, what are you reckoning, guys? Um... We're going to do our locom last locomotive location delivery. We're going to do a reveal. Here we go. Let's play locomotive livery location. So James Campbell's on class 37 at York. Um, York or Hud Huddersfield, James says. JLS is 37 at Marlebone. A train spot from Berkshire. It says 37 at Oakhampton. Yorkshire level crossing channel 37 at Huddersfield. Uh, Laser Jet's also going at Huddersfield. What do we reckon, guys? Should we have a reveal? Thanks very much to Ray Gunn for sending this in. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. And that is a Colas, class 37. And that is Preston. So, I can't remember who said it, but someone did say Preston earlier on. If it was you, then uh, post in the chat. Give yourself a pat on the back. 37, Preston. Thank you very much, Raygun. Or sending that one in. Yorkshire level crossing doesn't look like York to me. It's not York, that's why. <laughs> uh, Aeronautics, I'm not seeing the flag on the Colas 37s. Definitely a Colas 37. I've uh, I've done a little bit of dodgy editing on the picture there to take out the, the names and the logos and stuff and protect the, the identity of the two crew members in the picture there because uh, that's always a good thing to do. Okie dokie, that button there and then that one there. So there's 115 of you lovely people still watching. If you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Um, that would be absolutely brilliant. You can get your Dad Round merch in the Dad Round merch store as well. Yeah, just, just saying. Putting it out there. Nice cups and all sorts. There's going to be a tea and biscuits with a manager cup coming soon as well. 
<laughs> so do look out for those. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Really do uh, appreciate your time. Don't forget to hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Change Iowa Rules video. Um, like I said, I've got three of them filmed. I'm just trying to find time to edit them together. But it should be out um, hopefully tomorrow. If not, then um, certainly by the middle of this week. Discord server, guys, if you want to join our Discord server, talk about train simulator trains in general, talk to other railway staff or enthusiasts, you'll find an invitation link in the description below. You can follow me on my social media channels, which are on the screen for you right now. Pressing that button there to start the end music. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Very much appreciated. And I hope to see you very soon in the next stream. Bye for now.